Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. So I got a pretty relaxed and chill video for you guys today, and I want to go over this list of the top 100 closed-end funds based off of market capitalization. So you can see here we have the ticker symbol as well as the name of these closed-end funds, along with a quick rundown of their categories, and they have three to give you more insight. This is their market cap, the current yield, and their leverage. And of course, the high yield and the use of leverage is what makes closed-end funds different than ETFs. Before we get too deep into this analysis though, I do want to remind you guys to go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content, because the YouTube algorithm is a very mysterious creature. So make sure you subscribe so you don't lose track of the channel, and a like on the video is always deeply appreciated. Okay, so quick side quest. When it comes to my investments, I do want to say that we are back in the green. That's nice to see. It has been a rough month for all of us. And leave a comment down below if you are back in the green or still in the red. But when it comes to closed end funds, I personally invest in just one, and that's BST. This is the BlackRock Science and Technology Trust, and it's very similar to the ARK Innovation ETF, but it uses covered calls, has managed distributions, and a higher expense ratio. It's pretty large with $1.4 billion in assets under management and a dividend yield of 6.8. So needless to say, that's one of my favorite closed-end funds. And another one I'm pretty fond of is CII, and this is the BlackRock Enhanced Capital and Income Fund. It has a current distribution of 5.75%, and it's trading at a discount. But unlike with BST, there's really nothing exciting here. They invest in U.S. equities and some foreign equities, and they do sell covered calls on a portion of the portfolio. So those are both closed-end funds that I like and I've reviewed before on the channel. But let's explore this list a little bit more to discover something new. Because closed-end funds come in many different shapes and sizes, and they're pretty fun to at least research and learn about. So I went through this list and I pulled out three that really caught my attention, beginning with EXG. This is a tax-managed global diversified equity income fund. And we can see from these characteristics that they use options, they have a very high dividend yield, and they essentially have no leverage. So EXG is up 6% over the past one year, and over the past five years, a modest 14.88%. But of course, the dividend yield is the star of the show at 8.56%. Although I do want to point out that briefly in 2019, they did cut their dividend before resuming it. Okay, so the total performance isn't anything special. But the reason why you would invest in a closed-end fund like this is because of the very unique characteristics. So the fund invests in a diversified portfolio of domestic and foreign common stocks with an emphasis on dividend paying stocks and writes call options on one or more US and foreign indices with respect to a portion of the value of the common stock. So that's one of the advantages of the active management, but here's the other one and the main selling point in my opinion. So the fund evaluates returns on an after-tax basis and seeks to minimize and defer federal income taxes incurred by shareholders in connection with their investment in the fund. So right here they lay out their yearly distributions and how they're qualified in terms of taxes. So if you recall there's two main sources of income, they have a preference for dividend paying companies, but they also use covered calls. So in terms of the dividends themselves, they're all classified as qualified dividends, but even so, the total here is only 9.46% for 2019. The rest of the income generated by those covered calls is classified as non-dividend distributions. Now, I'm no tax expert, so definitely do your own research, but after a quick Google search, this is what I found on non-dividend distributions. So this is a distribution that is not paid out of the earnings and profits of a corporation or mutual fund. Typically, this is return of capital or the investment that was made by the owner of the corporation or mutual fund. These distributions reduce the basis of of your stock. A reduction in the basis is not taxed until your basis or the investment in the stock is fully recovered. Now this strategy of return of capital is actually a way to defer taxes into the future because instead of paying taxes on it now, it gets deducted from your cost basis. So if you have an investment of 1,000 bucks in something that has 100% non-dividend distributions, the first 1,000 bucks of those distributions will be deducted from your cost basis, and thus you do not pay taxes on it until that point. So to put it all together, EXG is a very unique closed-end fund. They have global diversification with 
still a lot of exposure to U.S. equities. They also have an emphasis on dividend stocks, but they still have a lot of growth stocks. They use cover calls to boost income. They have a tax efficiency approach, and they have an 8.5% dividend yield. And you do have to pay for that with an expense ratio of 1.07%. Now, the next fund I thought was pretty interesting was ticker CSQ. And this is a strategic total return closed end fund. We can see they have a dividend yield of 7%, and they do have some leverage. And here's the performance over the past one year, 3.5%. And over the past five years, a pretty respectable 59.86%. And as we saw, the dividend yield is 7%, and the history is pretty solid. The fund seeks total return through a combination of capital appreciation and current income by investing in a diversified portfolio of equities, convertible securities, and high-yield corporate bonds. And this exposure to bonds as well as equities is what makes this closed-end fund different. In fact, if we come over to Seeking Alpha and look at the holdings, as promised, a lot of this is in equities, but we can see right here that corporate bonds are 30% of the current portfolio. And depending on who you are, that could be a very attractive feature. And in one of their key features, they said that this close end fund offers a diversified approach that includes at least 50% in equities. So that's their overarching goal. And then the final point here is that they do use leverage at their own discretion when they see fit. So this closed end fund, ticker CSQ, is primarily invested in U.S. equities, but it also has exposure to convertibles and high yield securities. They also do use leverage when they see fit. Currently, it's about 30% leverage. They have a 7% dividend yield, and you have to pay a 1.47% expense ratio for all of those benefits. And the final closed end fund I want to draw your attention to is Big Z. This is by BlackRock. They have a dividend yield of 8.72%, and they use basically no leverage. So if you guys remember back to the beginning of this video, I said that I invest in BST, which is a closed end fund by BlackRock, and they invest in science and technology. And I view Big Z as being very similar. So the trust will invest primarily in equity securities issued by mid and small capitalization companies that the trust advisor believes have an above average earnings growth potential. So these are growth companies that are quote unquote innovative. And if we take a look at the top 10 holdings, we can see a lot of growth techie and software names here, not too dissimilar from BST and other names like the ARK Innovation Fund. And not surprisingly, because of that, over the past one year, this fund is down 40%. In fact, the inception date is April 2021, which was at the peak of these growth names. So it's been nothing but downhill ever since. But that doesn't mean it's a bad investment and it could be a great buying opportunity. So because of all that volatility, the current distribution is over 10% and it's trading at a 12% discount at the current moment. So if you're a big fan of these names and you enjoy having a high dividend yield, this could be a fantastic opportunity if you can stomach the high volatility. So they focus on small and mid-cap tech and innovative companies. They also do sell covered calls, just like BST. That's how they generate a 10% yield. They're trading at a 12% discount, and they have an expense ratio of 1.25%. So there you have it, guys. Those are three very different and unique closed-end funds. They might not have the absolute best total returns, but they have very interesting strategies. And depending on your needs as an individual investor, one of these might be a perfect fit within your portfolio. Well, that's gonna do it for the video hope you guys enjoyed if you did and you're still watching i appreciate a like on the video go ahead and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one